Hello, hello, and welcome to my Christmas haul. I was lucky enough to get a few board games, as you can see, for Christmas. Now I'm also including the ones that my husband got, but what's his is mine. same board game wall right behind me. So some of them I did already open because we've played a couple of them, uh, but the rest will open and we'll take a look at each one This is an exit the game, which means it's basically an escape room in a box. The level is closer to novice than expert. Two out of five pips. And we played this one on Christmas Day. And we did successfully complete it, uh, but it took us longer than, I think one hour is the estimated time. Yeah, okay, so it says one to two hours. Uh, so I think the idea is to try to beat it in 60 minutes. It took us an hour and a half. And we only used one hint card, but otherwise, it's not that it was easy, but it was interesting, and all the puzzles were pretty well thought out, so it, it made sense. You know, it took us a few minutes, and then we'd figure out this is what they need us to do, and then we would execute. Except there was just one that was a bit trickier, and once we got the, the hint card on that one, we all felt so silly for not noticing it but they did a good job hiding what was needed. Try not to let you see inside the box in case you want to get this for yourselves. But the story of the game was a lot of fun. It almost felt like Into the Woods, the musical. What's the game about? Once upon a time, the plan was to take a relaxing walk in the woods. But just as you cross the only bridge in the woods, you hear a loud whoosh. And you turn around to see that the bridge has disappeared behind you. Hmm, here you are. And all of a sudden, the forest looks a lot darker. Maybe even a little spooky. What? Now there's a gigantic wolf approaching you. You freeze and stand still as a tree. The wolf starts speaking in a deep, growling voice. Hi folks, what are you staring at? Never seen a wolf before? You might be able to help me. I am looking for a rude little brat with a red cape. Have you seen her, by chance? Uh, no, no, not really, you stutter. But then you gather all your courage and ask the wolf how you can get back out of the forest. Word has it that the bridge will only reappear for those who work together to solve a few enchanted riddles. The mysterious book and strange decoder disc might come in handy here. I can give you those to take with you. But don't worry, if you fail to solve the riddles and have to stay behind in the forest, I'm sure you will be able to find a fairy tale to play a permanent role in forever and ever. 
So it then proceeds to have, you know, nine or ten riddles that you have to solve, and on the last one, the bridge appears, and you escape. Next up, Love Letter. I haven't actually played Love Letter yet, so I'm really excited to have it. Of course, I've seen the Will Wheaton tabletop episode with that included Love Letter. So let's open it up. Hopefully I don't need scissors. Beautiful red velvet bag. Some gold string drawstrings. A scales of justice symbol. Let's see what's inside. Okay, rules of play in this tiny little booklet. In Love Letter, two to six suitors compete to have their missives delivered to the kingdom's princess, who seeks an ideal partner and confidant for when she assumes the throne. Love Letter is played over several game rounds in which you enlist the allies, friends, and family of the princess to carry a letter of intent to her. The card in your hand represents the person who currently carries your letter, but this can change during the round as you draw and play cards. To win a round, you must either have the highest value card at the end of the round or be the only player left in the round. So oh, here we go, the token. After any turn, if the deck is empty, all players still in the round reveal and compare the cards in their hands. If you have the highest value card, you win the round and gain one favor token. Your letter was successfully delivered to the princess. If there's a tie, all tied players win the round and each gains one token. Okay, so winning the game. The game ends when one player has enough favor tokens to win based on the number of players. And there's a table in here. Multiple players can simultaneously win the game. Interesting. Okay, so if you have six players, you only need three favor tokens. But if you only play with two players, first to six favor tokens wins. And then it goes through what each of the card effects are. Very interesting. Gonna keep this close by. And the cards.
So I think these are reference cards. Yes. So it shows you what each of the cards are and what their special ability is. That's good to have as a reference. So we have guard cards. Choose another player and name a non-guard card. If that player has that card, they are out of the round. Next up is the priest. Choose and look at another player's hand. I feel like that could be powerful. Oh, there's only two of those cards. The Baron. Also only two of these. Choose and secretly compare hands with another player. Whoever has the lower value is out of the round. Ooh. That's a risky card. There are two handmaids. Until your next turn, other players cannot choose you for their card effects. That's good. It's a good defense card. The prince. Also, just two of these. Choose any player, including yourself. That player discards their hand and redraws. Interesting. That can really ruin someone's strategy. The Chancellor. Draw two cards. Keep one card and put your other two on the bottom of the deck in any order. The king, oh, there's only one king, choose and trade hands with another player. I think he has like a, I think it's a French bulldog sitting in his lap. That's really cute. The countess, only one card. If the king or prince is in your hand, you must play this card. Ooh, so that lets everyone else know that you either have the king or the prince. Interesting. And then we have the princess. If you play or discard this card, you are out of the round. So obviously you want to keep this till the end. Ooh, and there are two spies. At the end of the round, if you are the only player in the round who played or discarded a spy, gain one favor token. Interesting. Well, I'm very excited to give this a try. We will keep it in the bag, preserve their, the quality here.
Next up, we have a two-part adventure. So it's another Exit the Game. I've never had one that was two parts, so that's pretty cool. The Catacombs of Horror. So in this one, this one is four and a half pips, so it is almost expert. Considering we needed a clue on the easy one, I'm sure this one will be a really fun challenge. And the playtime now is two to four hours. Very interesting. Okay, so I can't open up too much, but I'm hoping there's a, a little booklet that I can go through. Do not open this box until you have solved the something riddle. I'm sure that'll make sense later. It comes with a little candle. That's adorable. Just a little tea candle. Like a real legit candle. Like there's wax, there's a wick, yarn. Oh my goodness. There are these three adorable skulls. They're colorful. Oh, they actually have like a weight to them. Almost like marbles. But I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Here's a little, little blue skull. Oh, I'm excited to find out what this is all about. When I'm done, these are going to go up on the shelf. Okay, a little standy. Interesting. I'm not going to open the cards. I'll wait on that. But... Sorry, I got distracted. There's so much stuff in here. And there's like cardboard cutouts that can pop out. But I don't want to get ahead of myself and I, I won't pop it out until I play the, the game for real. But what's the story of the game? Completely out of the blue, a letter arrives from Ben, your good friend and renowned archaeologist. He reports on his latest adventure, but fears that it's starting to get out of hand. If you don't hear from him in the next few days, he wants you to look for him. The location is not exactly reassuring. The catacombs of Paris, where the remains of more than six million people lie buried. Still hoping to hear from Ben, you wait for days without any word. Eventually, there's no way around it. You have to look for your friend and help him escape from his unfortunate situation. You dig out his letter again. The envelope contains the lines written to you, a Polaroid photo, and an odd disc. You wonder why he chose to send you this information so cryptically. 
Only if you can work together to figure out these mysteries and solve all the riddles will you be able to save Ben. Otherwise, he is not the only one who will remain lost forever in the catacombs of horror. That is fantastic. I cannot wait to try this one. Playing the Pandemic Legacy Seasons 1 and 2. Um, so anything that has more than one game within the game is just super, super fun and interesting for me. So I am pumped. Next up, Unlock. This one is Exotic Adventures. Yeah. So each box of Unlock comes with three separate mysteries or adventures. And similar to the exit, it's just like an escape room where you have to solve all the riddles in order to win. I do enjoy the mechanics of Unlock because it's all card based. Sometimes you're moving the cards around, flipping them over. As soon as you put two together, there's a new picture that's formed. So many creative ways using just a deck of cards. Now we did already play two of them. As you can see from this already folded up piece of paper. So yes, sometimes you do get a few extra bonus materials that are part of the puzzles, but for the most part it's just the cards. Uh, so we haven't used this one yet. This must be for Expedition Challenger. The three that we play or the two that we played are The Knight of the Boogeyman and Scheherazade's Last Tale. And both of these we got three stars, or yeah, three out of five stars, based on the amount of time it took and our penalties and how many hints we needed. Um, but for both, there was one section we kept getting penalties, but we, we swear we were doing the right thing, and it just wasn't working. We did eventually figure it out, but we completed both in less than one hour, but with our penalties, we were actually over 60 minutes. Just rude. But that's okay. We have not yet opened up Expedition Challenger. Each box also comes with a zero mission, which is a tutorial that teaches you how the game works. So it's always pretty simple, but just a good way to learn the game before, you know, ruining a potentially good score in the real deal. And for the unlocks, 
you also need to use an app. So a lot of times you're you know, adding cards together to create a code and then you in the app enter the code and then the app will say like congratulations now pull card 23 and that's how you keep the game moving. And finally, with the big one, the Prosperity Expansion for Dominion. We haven't actually played the expansion yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing what cards are in here. And, uh, not that long ago, I had done an unboxing video of the classic Dominion, and since then it has quickly become one of our favorite games to play. So it's really nice to introduce new cards into the mix. Okay, prosperity. Ah, money. There's nothing like the sound of coins clinking in your hands. You vastly prefer it to the sound of coins clinking in someone else's hands. Or the sound of coins just sitting there in a pile that no one can quite reach without getting up. Getting up, that's all behind you now. Life has been good to you. Just ten years ago, you were tilling your own fields in a simple straw hat. Today, your kingdom stretches from sea to sea, and your straw hat is the largest the world has ever known. You also have the world's smallest dog, and a life-size statue of yourself made of baklava. Sure, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy envy, anger, and also this kind of blank feeling. You still have problems, troublesome neighbors that must be conquered, but this time, you'll conquer them in style. This is the fourth edition to the game of Dominion. It adds 25 new kingdom cards, plus two new basic cards. The central theme is wealth. There are treasures with abilities, cards that interact with treasures, and powerful, expensive cards. Dominion Prosperity cannot be played by itself. To play it, you need the basic cards. We hope you enjoy this expanding world of Dominion. I'm sure I will. And of course we have our, our ledger here. Yes. And we have cardboard things to pop out. I wonder where they go. Ooh.
So these seem to be victory points because they're in the shape of the shield. Okay, so these ones are coin tokens. Don't really know where they go yet, but we'll place them here for now. These are one point tokens. If I was right, they are the victory points. Okay, our new cards. We have the bank. The bishop. A city. Ooh, plus one card, plus two actions. If there, are, if there are one or more empty supply piles, plus one card. If there are two or more, plus one buy and plus one coin. Wow. That's really, really good near the end game. Contraband. Ooh. So it's three or three coins plus one buy. The player to your left names a card. You can't buy that card this turn. Ooh, interesting. Counting house. That's neat. Look through your discard pile, reveal any number of coppers from it, and put them into your hand. Expand. Trash a card from your hand. Gain a card costing up to three coins more than it. Ooh. It's an expensive card, but for good reason. Then we've got the forge. Okay, so you're, it's a way to, to trash cards again. 
raccoons. Okay, good. You're able to buy and get money. Oh, but it's an attack. Each other player discards down to three cards. Ooh. A grand market. So it lets you do basically one of everything. And a horde. Oh, this looks like where a dragon would hang out. While you have this, while you have this is in play, when you buy a victory card, gain a gold. I feel like they, they squished two sentences together. While you have this in play, when you buy a victory card, gain a gold. Or if you have this, but no, when this is in play. That's a weird wording, but it means the same. King's Court. Oh, you may play an action card from your hand three times. Loan. Reveal cards from your deck until you reveal a treasure. Discard it or trash it. Discard the other cards. Oh, because this gives you a coin. The Mint. You may reveal a treasure card from your hand. Gain a copy of it. When you buy this, trash all treasures you have in play. Wow. Monument. Get two gold and one victory. Mount Bank. Each other player may discard a curse. If they don't, they gain a curse and a copper. Interesting. Then we have the Peddler. Plus one card, plus one action, plus one coin. During a player's buy phase, this costs two coins less per action card they have in play. Otherwise, it's worth eight. Interesting. Ooh, a quarry. So it's worth one coin. While this is in play, action cards cost two less. The Rebel. Plus three cards. Each other player reveals the top three cards of their deck, discards the actions and treasures, and puts the rest back in any order they choose. Now that's an attack. Royal Seal. It's worth two coins. While you have this card in play, when you gain a card, you may put that card onto your deck. As opposed to it going in your discard pile. The Talisman. It's worth a coin. While well, you have this in play, when you buy a non-victory card costing four or less, gain a copy of it. Okay, okay.
trade route, plus one buy. Trash a card from your hand, plus one coin, token, on the trade route map. Met. Set up. Add a coin token to each victory supply pile. Move that token to the trade route met when a card is gained from the pile. Assuming that must have to do with one of these. Trade route. Hmm. Okay, we've got our uh, blue backed cards. Some of them. Keep these aside. More trade route. Out of curiosity, then, is there a blue in here? The vault plus two cards. Discard any number of cards for a plus one coin each. Each other player may discard two cards to draw a card. Okay, and I think these are all blue here, yep. More vault. Venture. Reveal cards from your deck until you reveal a treasure. Discard the other cards, play that treasure. Ooh, Watchtower. Draw until you have six cards in hand. When you gain a card, you may reveal this from your hand to either trash that card or put it onto your deck. Hmm. Worker's Village Plus one card, plus two actions, plus one buy. Solid. Here's the Platinum. Are all these new cards? Very good. So, here we go. The bank. The bishop. Hmm, maybe it's easier if I go from this way. Peddler. Forward. 
Good. Blue cards. The watchtower. Venture. pieces are for. Well, you know what? I'm going to keep them there. Because then they're separate. Where can I put these? Do they go like this? No. Too tall. didn't like make a spot for these here. Do we want an angle on that one? It's still too much. Mm -hmm. It's annoying because like they could have fit. Oh, can I do it? There we go. And then it's like a diamond shape. Well, I look forward to playing it and seeing what the new cards have in store for us. Sweet dreams.